Now we head to the Democratic Republic of Congo, where the country's M23 rebel group has agreed to lay down its arms, effectively concluding the militant group's 20-month rebellion against the Congolese government. Here you can see the Congolese army occupying a former rebel stronghold, and Bertrand Bessimwa, the M23 chairman, said this in a statement on Tuesday. Commanders are requested to prepare the troops for the process of disarmament, demobilization, and social reintegration, whose terms are to be agreed with the Congolese government. He also added that the M23 will continue to seek reform through, quote, purely political means. And since the rebellion began in 2012, the BBC reports that at least 800,000 people have fled their homes. M23 rebels are army deserters who say they are fighting for the rights of the minority Tutsi ethnic group. But many analysts believe that a central factor in bringing about a surrender of the M23 was in fact America's pressure on the Rwandan government, which reportedly backed the group. The U.S. has since suspended its military aid to Rwanda. That happened in July 2012. Ida Sawyer, a researcher with Human Rights Watch, told the New York Times, the international pressure on Rwanda seems to have made a difference. They will hopefully think twice before backing yet another abusive rebellion. Now, while many are relieved to see an end to the standoff, there are concerns that the M23 surrender won't forge a lasting peace. And quite frankly, it must be said, there are at least a dozen militant groups that continue to challenge the Congolese army and threaten the stability of the country.